Okay, I have another interesting, I hope, teardown for you. This is something that I nabbed from work. I have to take it back because it's got to go through um, W Trickley disposal. So I can only keep it for this teardown. Mysterious thing. Uh, it's not a mysterious, it's the innards from a Dyson Airblade. Remember those um, hand dryers that use, rather than warm air to evaporate water, a stream of extremely high velocity air to just mechanically blast the water off your hands. So it's got a stream of air, no, stream of air and your hand passes through it. Well, they uh, have a bit of reputation because they turn out to be fantastic devices for turning all that dirty water on your hand after you've uh, wiped your ass into a nice spread of airborne aerosolized pathogens. So, not the most hygienic of hand dryers for the person who uses the room after you. Well, let's see how this thing works. I've already taken the screws out to save some time. Intake is on the bottom. That is years worth of accumulated dust because it has a filtered inlet. Now, if you look at certain Dyson defending sites, like Dyson's own, they will say that the device is more hygienic because an ordinary hand dryer blows air straight from the room onto your hands while theirs has filtered air. Well, no, because the problem is always that it's blowing the aerosol of dirty water into the air, not from it. But also this filter was not intended as a hygiene measure. It's because the nozzles at the top are so um, narrow to get the required airflow rate that any kind of dirt would clog them up. So that's for a filter on the inlet. This is an easily changeable module, it just clips out. And as you can see, it is yeah, box standard air filter. Does that? Yeah, sort of multi-layer, whatever that is. Seems to have a pretty good job though. Air goes in through this hole. Most of this is just moulded plastic framing. But there are three things I think are four things that are worth noting. Firstly, this connector. Now does this not just scream custom engineered bespoke quality, this unique quincunxial design. Maybe it does, but to me it also screams a 99 pence or a 9 pence standard off the shelf connector would have been a much better choice than wasting resources on this custom engineered over the top thing. Because you do not really need a custom engineered moulded connector. Now if I can get this thing off, uh, um, well it looks like it's meant to come apart, so it's not got a release, I've actually opened this up yet. Uh, ah, this thing's going back in the bin anyway, do some brute force. Uh, uh, mm. There we go. See, on the inside, it's pretty much what you would expect. Mains, mains, and these three go out the board. Now I'm guessing, and I only speculate, that inside of this part is a very small switch mode power supply, and you've probably got ground five volts and turn on the fan signal from the control electronics. I see it's designed so that the these two pins will always make contact first. Although why are we plugging this thing in with the power turned on? I don't really know because this should never be taken off once it's put onto the factory unless you're actually repairing it, in which case the power should be disconnected. Um, uh, huh. it might be just well I didn't need to get this thing back together because I'm not really sure how. Oh, like that. And that clips on there. Right. 
Now let's take it off again. When you take off two screws at the end, this thing lifts out. Uh, sort of. This is the fan itself. I cannot get into this. Or maybe I can. Oh, yeah, there's the screws. They're hidden behind this little airtight seal. So, I presume that's how you get into the thing. One moment. Is that four screws or six? Nope, four. It's not even worth pausing the video recording for. See, I'm curious about this. Dyson's advertising always makes much of their Dyson digital motor. As if that's something special. And they brag about being these masters of aerodynamics company because their first really big product was the cyclonic vacuum which they had the patent on and made famous and honestly it actually made a pretty good vacuum cleaner it wasn't their first product i mean the first one was the ball barrow but it was the one that made the company big So are they really half as good as they say, or is it all just marketing hype? Soon we shall find out. Soon we shall find out. Is there another screw hidden in here that I've missed? Or is it just really tough to open? Anchored somehow through the connector, is it? Oh. Uh. Okay, so first thing to understand this thing is not coming apart, not without quite a fight, and I cannot make out enough of what's in there to tell you anything at all about how this fan works. So my curiosity shall remain unsatisfied. On to the next bit. Here we have the air outlet. Sort of looks like a bit of a heart, doesn't it? One tube goes off to a blade shooting this way. One tube goes off to a blade shooting that way. And in your hand, it sort of goes down the middle. So your hand goes up and down and your air goes side to side and blows all the water off. I've used it, it actually does do a good job. It's fantastic for getting your hands dry. It's fantastic for making the next person ill. This is a very narrow vent here. This is um, clearly designed for a bit of high pressure air rather than just high flow rate because it has to go through the narrow nozzles. So. A tight spot at the throat here is not going to bother it too much. If I could get this thing open, I'm guessing, and I can see the motor there. One. That's a. Uh, really? Okay, the precious Dyson digital motor in here, looking at the way those coils are arranged, is uh, some kind of AC six pole motor. Brushless DC, possibly, or well, yeah, probably a brushless DC motor. So nothing too fancy. Oh well, next part. Here we have the final piece, the controlled electronics, which I've had to hack out because I couldn't get it all disconnected. This thing was actually broken because some nasty little person thought it'd be fun to smash the beam brake light sensors and stop it from turning on.
here's the electronics there's nothing really fancy in here nice touch i'll give the dyson though this thing is covered in moisture proofing um varnish of some sort which makes great sense because it's for use in wet areas you would expect condensation issues and things like that so you can get some thought what all this does i have no idea at all i mean looking at the in this side here i mean that looks to me uh choke stuff isolating transformer air gap opto isolator over it uh, where's the camera oh. there we go yeah in choke stuff Trans isolating transformer opto isolator over an air gap that looks to me like a switching power supply so maybe i was wrong and the power supply is not actually in the fan maybe it brings mains through these Oh, my camera's falling off its mount. Maybe it brings mains in through these worryingly thin wires and the power supply is on here. These go off to the two beam emitters and beam detectors. This is presumably a service or programming port but it doesn't do anything. But there's no point going into all this. It's clearly beam brake sensors, probably power supply power ground power ground rather live neutral and some kind of signal to turn on the motor well there you have it the uh, vaulted dyson air blade and inside is perfectly ordinary electronics perfectly ordinary fan and that sits some pipes and some nozzles is it well engineered yeah i'd say yes it actually is is it Dyson's top of the line industry leading magic? No, it's not. It's a decent product if you ignore the disease spreading problems with it. But it's it's not breakthrough stuff. It's not fantastically innovative. It's a slightly improved hand dryer. It's a slightly improved hand dryer and that now I've got to get a decent camera mount and that's all it is. So uh, well, back off for electronics recycling it goes. Yep, oh, I got it. Quick follow up. Um, yeah, now I can see inside. I don't you know what kind of motor that is. It's uh, weird. It appears to have four holes, but they're diametrically opposed rather than radially symmetric. It's no, I really don't know how that works. However, well, I can't tell you how the motor works. I can say it's spring mounted, so it's got some vibration damping. It's pretty clear the air goes in this end, flows past the motor for cooling. And comes out here so given it goes in this way and out that way i'm guessing it's a um, radial type fan fairly standard stuff oh. no i'm not going to get the whole thing apart there's clearly some kind of electronics in here because it's got a mysterious unconnected header programming diagnostics i don't know No, that's not budging and uh, you can see power and the control connecting to the board 